fantastic start um, and we're jumping ahead a little bit in the church calendar because that is the classic epiphany hymn uh, and it's not even advent yet but the idea of this uh, session is that we are going to be exploring music and liturgy for the season of epiphany Apologies today from Andrew Eris, who is stuck in London, uh, and so I'm coping on my own with the... Um, fortunately, you don't have to listen to me sing. You've got the beautiful singers behind me. Um, you may want to look at the words to the hymns as we sing the hymns, um, and they are available on the Heart Edge blog. So heartedge.org and look at the news bit and you'll find uh, music and liturgy for Epiphany and we, I've put all the words to the hymns there. So we're looking today not just at the day of Epiphany but at the season. Um, Ray Simpson in um, Liturgies from Lindisfarne, which I'm, I'm using today, um, he puts it like this. This season celebrates the showing forth of Christ's presence in the world. It is known as Epiphany in the Western Church and Theophany in the Eastern Church. It's an expression, it's an extension of Christmas and begins 12 days after Christmas, 6th of January in the Western Church. Its themes are the wise men taking the knowledge of the infant Christ back to their countries, week one. The baptism or immersion of Christ into the human life stream and the world into Christ, week two. The transformation of everyday life and creation, symbolised by the changing of water into wine, week three. The unifying of the whole created world with Christ, week four for Christian unity. The light spreading across the world underlies it all. So the music we've picked uh, today is pieces for the various Sundays and liturgically some of the suggestions for the general season and some more specifically. You'll find all the songs and the details of any books on a blog post, as I said, on the Heart Edge website. So the season of Epiphany um, at least uh, end for the Church of England, at least with the presentation of Christ in the temple which is technically celebrated on the 2nd of February, but in most churches on the nearest Sunday. This year, it's 
suggested that we keep the festival of the presentation of Christ in the temple on the 29th of January. The presentation is 40 days after Christmas, a known tradition as candle mass, because it's an opportunity to use lots of candles. There's a strong theme of light. In the church, we try to hold off on Christmas during Advent, despite the Christmas markets being open long before Advent even starts. We then get to Christmas, and people are pretty quickly fed up with Christmas already. Um, and we're trying to keep celebrating it. But that's, um, I guess, an inevitability in the church. So during the season of Epiphany, I try and uh, work with some of the imagery that we've used during Advent and Christmas. I do take down the Christmas tree on, a, on Twelfth Night, Epiphany, we take down the Christmas tree. But it's nice, I think, to leave the nativity scene up until the presentation of Christ in the temple. Um, I like to play with the Magi so that they're not in the nativity scene until Epiphany. We like to have them working their way up the church, bit by bit, on their journey. Um, but then, during the season of Epiphany, everyone's gathered there. Historically, probably inaccurate, but it's a good image. And um, when we... Um, uh, and then, at the end of Candlemas, we'll put away the nativity scene for another year. I mean, another thing that I like to do is use the Advent candles. Though we've spent good money buying those Advent candles, and we've lit them one by one during Advent, let's keep them burning during the season of Epiphany. There is uh, very good material for Candlemas in the Church of England's book, uh, Times and Seasons. It's a very rich, uh, there's a very rich tradition for Candlemas that comes from the more Catholic end of the church. Um, but, uh, and when I was growing up, when I was much younger than I am now, there were plenty of evangelical churches that were, would never want to use candles in church. It was seen as something popish and not a good thing to do. And these days, we kind of tend to um, be much more open to using different symbols and ritual to aid our walk with God. And so I would encourage the use of candles for candle mass. Um, the theme of light shining in the darkness is a really good one. And one of the um, books I wanted to suggest uh, as a resource is Dreamers and Stargazers by Chris Thorpe, where he has a lovely meditative service for Candlemas using Teze chants. It would work really well as an evening service. And I'm thinking we might even use a version of it for our monthly Teze service at the beginning of February. Going, so that's Candlemas, but going back to the beginning, Epiphany has a wonderful T.S. Eliot poem that is well worth using in a service. The Journey of the Magi is a well-known poem, but bringing poetry into to church is a good thing to do. Um, and that poem is an evocative account of the journey and of how the Magi were changed by their encounter with Christ. On the Sunday after Epiphany, we move to the Baptism of Christ, which is quite a jarring move uh, from the baby to a 30-year-old. The baptism of Christ, though, still has the theme of revelation or epiphany. And I've got a poem here from our old friend Malcolm Guy, who writes uh, very good poetry for use in church. And here is his one from, um, from Sounding the Seasons, one for the baptism of Christ. Beginning here, we glimpse the three in one. The river runs, the clouds are torn apart. The Father speaks, the Spirit and the Son. Reveal to us the single loving heart that beats behind the being of all things and calls and keeps and kindles us to light. The dove descends, the Spirit soars and sings. 
You are beloved, you are my delight. In that swift light and life as water spills and streams around the man like quickening rain, the voice that made the universe reveals the God in man who makes it new again. He calls us too to step into that river, to die and rise and live and love forever. The following week is the wedding at Cana, which is the first of Jesus' miracles or signs, but also has a powerful message of abundance. There is a huge amount of wine produced at this wedding feast. And I wonder whether there are ways for, this, ways for us to reflect this in our service or perhaps afterwards. Um, it's probably not helpful to have a large amount of wine if you have alcoholics in the congregation. Um, but perhaps an abundance of cake and the best quality tea and coffee to reflect the way that Jesus created the best quality wine for that wedding uh, feast. That's just a, a few tips for the season of Epiphany. Um, as I say, Andrew Eris is not with us today, but he has sent me some script. So, the Heart Edge Manchester Choral Scholars are going to be singing a selection of less well-known church music for Epiphany Sunday to Candlemas, journeying through the Sundays of Epiphany. The first hymn that we're going to listen to from the hymn book Ancient and Modern, Songs for Refreshing Worship, tells that story. The first verse reflects on Epiphany Sunday. Christ is our light, the bright and morning star, covering with radiance all from near and far. The second verse, the baptism of Christ. Uh, Christ is our love, baptised that we may know the love of God among us, swooping low. And the final verse is the wedding in Cana. Christ is our joy, transforming wedding guest. Through water turned to wine, the feast was blessed. The words are by Leith Fisher, who was a parish minister in the Church of Scotland in Glasgow and Falkirk, and well known. We're going to listen to Christ is Our Light. Our next hymn is by Bishop Dudley Smith, who was born in 1926 in Manchester. He retired in 19... 
one after almost 20 years in the Diocese of Norwich, as Archdeacon of Norwich and then as Bishop of Thetford. He's been writing hymn texts for more than 30 years, and perhaps his most famous hymn is the paraphrase of the Magnificat, Tell Out My Soul. The hymn that we're going to listen to now is based on John 1, 1 to 14, best, perhaps best known as the final lesson at the uh, Nine Lessons and Carols. It takes us on a journey from Christmas to a A darkness light has shone, still today the light shines on. Word made flesh in human birth, light and life of all. singing of the different canticles and psalms in common worship, morning and evening prayer. One of the canticles for Epiphany is a song of the New Jerusalem. Two different musical settings can be found in the Royal School of Church Music, Music for Common Worship volume, along with, with settings of a huge number of different texts in morning prayer, evening prayer, and communion. It's here sung to a chant by Norman Warren, who was Archdeacon of Rochester until his recent retirement, and has written a huge amount of published music. Turn 
The next one we're going to have is uh, from the Teze community. Teze worship consists of meditative singing and periods of silence in order to reach a contemplative state. They also practice silence with icons, candles, incense and prayer stations. They're attracting a, a, a large number of young people from around the world. The brothers explain short chants repeated again and again, given a meditative character. Using just a few words, the chants express a basic reality of faith, quickly grasped by the mind. As the words are sung over many times, this reality gradually penetrates the whole being. Brother Roger of Teze wrote, A simple prayer is like a soft sighing, like a child's prayer keeps us alert. Has not God revealed to those who are little, to Christ poor, what the powerful of this world have so much trouble understanding? Many ch Teze chants are settings of simple prayers, including this one. Lord Jesus Christ, your light shines within us. The next one we're going to have is, we shall draw water joyfully, which can be used at a service marking the baptism of Christ. It's a joyful setting by Paul Inwood, with a catchy refrain that anyone can sing. It can be found in all modern hymn books. The words are based on Isaiah 12, verse 3. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and my song and he has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. joyfully from the world's of salvation. 
singing joyfully, singing joyfully. We shall draw water joyfully from the world's springs of salvation. Give thanks, or oh, give thanks to the Lord. Give praise to his holy name, make his mighty deeds known. joyfully, singing joyfully, singing joyfully. We shall draw water joyfully from the wellsprings of salvation. We're now going to have another Teze chant. Um, this one is, would be particularly appropriate for candle mass, reflecting on the themes of light and glory and praise. Jesus, redeemer of the world, light and splendor of God the Father, glory and praise to you, all glory and praise to you. We're going to um, listen to it in, in Latin. The Teze community write many of their songs, well, write in a variety of languages. Um, it's an international gathering and they use lots of different languages. And they'll often use Latin because it's a neutral language. It's nobody's language. Um, and uh, we're going to listen to this one in Latin and then in English. So we're going to listen to Jesu Redemptor Omnia. shared with you through the um, blog on uh, the Heart Edge website the, um, uh, the words for today's music. Um, if you are looking for the music, most of it can be found in uh, ancient and modern hymns for refreshing worship. And if you want to delve deeper um, into the Teze website, you will find uh, that they offer for free, they offer the music for a great many of their songs on the website, but you can also purchase uh, books with further uh, music. Uh, our final piece is again by Timothy Dudley Smith, our final piece before we close with an act of worship. So we're going to finish with a, a short act of worship. But our final piece that they're going to sing for us today is Light of the World. i 
going to do now is we've got, um, uh, hopefully those who are in the building have one of these sheets, um, we'll get you one, um, and uh, on the uh, front, of the, the, I've done it kind of back to front, so we've got an uh, evening prayer, which we're taken from that book I, I showed you earlier, um, which uh, liturgies from Lindisfarne which is quite a, a good resource to give you some, um, a variety of, of approaches to uh, morning prayer, daily prayer, or midday prayer, and evening prayer, and there are good resources in there. We're just going to use evening prayer for the season of Epiphany, uh, and so join in. star leads the wise three to the infant king of all. Alleluia. In the waters of baptism, Jesus is revealed as Christ. Alleluia. In the water made wine, Christ revealed a new creation. Alleluia. Let us worship the Lord whose glory streams towards us. Sick, Christ is our life. So let us say together, Holy, holy, holy is our God, Emmanuel, presence with us now. We have an Old Testament reading from Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, 
and the thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. And let us together affirm our faith. Christ was revealed in human form, shown to be right by the Spirit, worshipped by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed in throughout the world, taken up into heaven. And a reading from John. The next day he saw Jesus coming towards him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is he whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptising with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptise with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptises with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. And we sing again, we sing Jesus. We invite you.
May your light stream into seekers, people of all faiths and of mind. May your light stream into dark places of neglect, crime. May your light stream into centres of commerce, industry and government. May your light stream into us, our homes and our communities. From the rising of the sun to its going down, God's name will be praised. So we end in short prayers. We're going to sing Jesus, Redeemer of the Lord. another as we say together the Lord bless you keep you and be gracious to you the Lord's face shine upon you and give you peace Amen. thank you for joining us today whether you're in the building uh, or online watching live or watching the recording later um, if you're interested in following the, um, or in uh, enjoying the music of the Heart Edge Choral Scholars, I was just trying to look up where you are on Saturday. Do you know where you are on Saturday? Hmm? St. Anne's Clifton. Thank you. Uh, St. Anne's Clifton at one o'clock, I imagine. So, um, oh, it might be 12.30. But anyway... Um, check out the Heart Edge Manchester uh, website. If you Google Heart Edge Manchester, you'll find it, um, and you'll find the details there. Um, but thank you for joining us today.